Hello. Today we're continuing our Going Deeper series in Revelation and we've reached chapter 6. Yesterday, as we looked at chapter 6 in the meeting, we saw it brings a very challenging picture of the world. The four horsemen bring conquest, war, famine and death. We saw that that was very much part of the Roman world then, but it's also part of our world now. Uh, a factor that in our comfortable Western world we can so easily try to hide from. And the pandemic is bringing it home to us, even here in the West. We also saw that Christians sometimes suffer because they follow Jesus. And we noted that actually in many parts of the world the pandemic is making that worse now. It was a very unsafe world then and it's an unsafe world now. The challenge to the Christians then was to be faithful to Jesus, to be faithful witnesses. And it's the same for us. Our main goal is not to get back to normal or to get our finances back or to find our comforts again, but to follow Jesus in wherever we are, whatever situation we find ourselves in. We're not in the same situation as the Christians in Revelation, but we do have our own particular challenges. And that's what I'd like to reflect on. What does faithfulness mean for us now in our immediate situation? We're fighting a very infectious virus. Every day we're bombarded with statistics about deaths and infections, of stories of people who died or survived, pictures both sad and happy. Uh, we know the economic effect on individuals, families, on businesses, on nations, and many of us are experiencing some of that already. We're told to stay at home if possible, and that is helping to slow down the infection rate uh, and to reduce the number of deaths. But COVID is still around. There's a possible second wave as we begin to open up. So the concern is still with us. So what does all that do to us inside? It's easy to go to a spirit of fear instead of faith, of self-protection instead of self-giving. We can get used and be comfortable in a new situation that we didn't like originally. And we can lose motivation so easily a number of people have said that to me. We can lose engagement with what's going on outside, with God's mission. So instead of embracing the opportunities, we actually find ourselves more isolated and more disconnected from what's going on in the world. Now, being faithful to Jesus means fighting that spirit of fear because he didn't give us a spirit of fear, a spirit, a, a spirit of love and power and of self-control. It involves embracing that attitude of self-giving faith and seizing the opportunities of the moment that he has given us. Now, just like the Christians then, we can only do this by looking to Jesus. And we saw in chapter 5 and 6, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah, the one who has conquered death. He's the Lamb of God who loved us and died for us and still loves us. So we know that our lives are safe with him, that in every situation he is with us and cares for us. And even if we die, we will be with him forever. We will see him face to face and all the pain and grief will be gone. But that knowledge of him must be translated into practical outworking in our daily lives. And I'd like to think of three aspects of faithfulness today. They all involve the word body. Number one, honouring our own body. In these days, it's really easy to give in to overeating, lack of exercise, staying up late, messing up our sleep times. And this has a bad effect on our body quite quickly. But our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. We are called to glorify God 
with our bodies. If we don't honour the temple of the Holy Spirit, how can we expect the Holy Spirit to work through us? If we weaken our bodies, how can we be ready for the opportunities that God gives? So let's honour God with our bodies. We're not just fighting a virus. We're fighting for God's glory in our own bodies. And number two, loving the body of Christ. Now we know we're all called to be part of the body of Christ, the church. But the lockdown, physically at least, has pushed us apart. And our enemy, the devil, would love us to become disconnected and isolated and separated. We need to fight isolation. We need to make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25 says this, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. First meeting together. Online services are not the same. We all feel that. But let us make the most of us. There's a huge labour of love from many people goes to, into making these available to us. So let's aim to be there. To be on time. We are meeting with Jesus. We are meeting with his body. And as we come, let's come to engage in worship. We may be in a strange situation. It may be odd singing at home. But Jesus is still worthy of all our praise and all our honour. And as the word is preached, let's receive it with eagerness and enthusiasm. It's still God's word. It still changes us. And helps us to become more like him. And then with our life groups. They're just as important. This is where we all have something to contribute. Let's come not just as a last resort turning up late. But let's come along eager to contribute. Let's pray in advance. What can I share? What can I bring that will encourage people here today? Let's come willing to pray for one another. For God's work in the world. And then this passage also talks to us about encouraging one another. And in these days, uh, we all need encouragement so much, don't we? But it's very easy to become passive. But scripture says this, don't only look to your own interests, but also to those of others. It says, give and it shall be given to you. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. In other words, don't be passive, but let's be active. Let's not be self-seeking, first of all, but self-giving. And as we do that, God will build us up and strengthen us. So don't just wait for someone else to call you. Why don't you take the initiative to call somebody you haven't seen for a while, to make sure you keep in touch with that friend, to look out for that person that is isolated, even if you are isolated yourself. Some of us have lots of spare time these days. Let's make the most of it for the body. Some of us, to be fair, have very, very little. Life is incredibly busy. But for us, let's make the most of those limited opportunities we have. Whichever way it is, let us fight for the body. And finally, uh, the writer says, let's spur one another on to love and good deeds. Uh, Let's not just accept what is going on. Let us provoke one another. Uh, is your friend just staying in? Provoke him or her to get out, to take the fresh air, if they uh, healthily can do that. Is someone getting disconnected? Encourage them to keep connected. Let's be a provocation to one another. Let's use the freedoms that we have. We're not just fighting a virus. We're fighting for the body of Christ. And then number three, let's serve everybody. One good aspect of the lockdown is the great developments in community we've seen, at least temporarily, 
in some places. I know in some ways we also see signs of it breaking down. But what else do we expect? Who can really demonstrate love and community? It's we who are the salt of the earth. It's we who are the light of the world. This is not a time for us to retreat into our own safety, but to reach out to others with the love of Jesus. So what opportunities do you have now where you live to reach out and get to know people in new ways? Do you have skills you can offer to people who live near you? Are there initiatives you can take to bring people together? Uh, it's been great to hear of various people setting up WhatsApp groups in their neighbourhood and beginning to develop fresh communication and support amongst local people. Now, of course, we have to be wise. We must obey the guidelines that were given. We need to respect the anxieties of others. Some people are less comfortable than others about getting together. We ourselves need to live within the faith that we have and not be pushed beyond what we're truly willing to do. But please don't let us be enslaved to fear or laziness. There are fresh opportunities now. It's a time for us to rise up to live for Jesus in the world both now and as we begin to open up. And I know that some of us are very busy in their daily work and uh, to talk about reaching neighbours, touching neighbours may just seem a burden, it's one thing too many. I just want to encourage you guys, uh, wherever you're at work, if you're out there, you are glorifying Jesus, you are being the salt of the earth and the light of the world, just in doing your work well. If you continue to do that work faithfully, honourably, with love, then you are being faithful witnesses to Jesus in this time. And please do not hesitate to get your life groups to keep praying for you with all the challenges you face in this time now. We're not just fighting a virus. We're fighting for the mission of Jesus to everybody. As we come out of this lockdown, there will certainly be some kind of new normal, whatever that will be, whenever it comes. And it will certainly bring new opportunities for the gospel. It will surely call for the body of Christ to rise up as never before. How can we be ready for that? By being faithful to Jesus now. In our bodies, in loving the body of Christ and in sharing his mission to the world.